Welcome to our video lecture on topic 9.3, plant growth. Our objective today, we are going to define meristem. We'll review mitosis. We'll talk about some of the hormones that control plant growth, specifically auxin. Auxin uses signal transduction to make actions happen, so we'll talk briefly about that. We'll look at some examples of tropisms, growth in plants, and then we will talk about this super fun thing, micropropagation. And here's just a quick peek at a micrograph of the shoot apex of a plant. This is the very tip of the plant where lots of growth is happening. Growth happens because of this meristem tissue. Meristem is the stem cell tissues of plants. So, 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 so much growth. Growth happening via mitosis. We'll review mitosis in a couple slides. Some growth in plants is determinate. And that means that there's like a pre-plant size that the plant is going to grow to and then it's going to stop. Flowers tend to have determinate growth growth patterns. Meristem, this apical meristem, and then these axillary bud meristems, this is indeterminate growth. It's just going to grow and grow and grow until something happens. It runs out of space. It runs out of nutrients or as humans chop it down. So, so lots of meristem tissue, lots of growth. Um, we're going to look at the next slide. Apical meristem versus axillary meristem. It's a pretty cool thing for us gardeners. The hormones in the apical meristem, that tiny little tip of the plant, is, is quite dominant. And so the, the hormones here, we're going to grow, grow this way, and we're going to inhibit growth going laterally. But if we chop that guy off, if we prune our plants, um, literally decapitate that apical bud, then there is no more inhibition of those axillary um, meristem buds, and then we end up with lots of branches. So when you're looking in your garden and you're thinking about, do you want super tall, skinny plants? Do not chop off the apical bud. Or do you want super branchy plants? Chop off that bud. Um, it's all because of these auxin hormones that either inhibit some growth or stimulate some growth. And if we're talking about growth, we may as well take a moment to review mitosis. Remember that the cell cycle is broken up into quite a few different chunks. We've got interphase. Interphase is broken up into G1 and S and G2. G1 and G2 are the gaps, but think about growth because this is when the cell is growing and making more organelles. S is DNA synthesis where we are copying the DNA so that each of the new daughter cells has a full copy. The majority of the time that a cell is alive, it is spent in interphase. Mitosis is PMAT. There are lots of intermediary phases that we usually just skip over. So we're going to focus just on PMAT, but know that there are there's more. Um, prophase, we're going to break down that nuclear membrane. We're going to condense our chromatin into chromosomes. Metaphase in the middle. Our spindle fiber proteins are going to push and pull the chromosomes to the equatorial plate or the middle of the cell. Anaphase, those same spindle fiber proteins are going to literally rip our chromosomes apart um, at the centromeres, those middle parts of the chromosomes. They're going to pull individual sister chromatids away into opposite poles of the cell. Telophase, we're going to start to uncoil that DNA. It's going to go back to chromatin, reform some nuclear membranes, and then cytokinesis, we have a lovely, lovely pinching of the cell membrane, and we end up with two whole new daughter cells. Plant growth, including that cell division, mitosis that we just talked about, is controlled by hormones, just like in us animals. There are lots of different families of hormones, um, and you can see that they're produced by different pieces of the plants, so that's kind of cool. They have different effects. So again, plants can grow in different ways depending on what's going on in their environment. We're going to focus today mostly on auxins. The mechanism by which auxin helps to get those plants to grow um, is going to start in the nucleus. So auxin hormones are going to activate, deactivate some genes, and then those genes are going to transcribe some messenger RNA, make some proteins, and we eventually end up with these proton pumps in the cell membrane of the plant cells. These proton pumps are going to, you guessed it, pump some protons 
out of the cell and into the cell wall, where we've got lots and lots of cellulose. In the cellulose, we also have these proteins called expansins. The protons that got pumped out of the cell into the cell wall because of the auxin activating some genes in the nucleus, those expansins are going to cause the cellulose to relax. It's going to loosen. It's going to get a little bit floppy. Because of that floppiness, the cellulose can stretch out a little bit, which means that more water can move into the, the large central vacuole and stretch out that cell, stretching out that cellulose. And that's how plant cells get bigger. And then, of course, it would move into mitosis next if it needs to do that. How these auxins activate and deactivate genes is a mechanism known as signal transduction. So we have these hormones that are going to bind to receptors, the receptors in the, in the cell membranes of the plant cells, and then some shape changes and some energy transferring, maybe some ATP or perhaps some GTP, is going to activate some relay molecules. And they'll activate another relay molecule and then another relay molecule. We call this a cascade effect because we we have one guy initiating the next, initiating the next. The super cool thing about this relay, this cascade, is that the, the protein receptors don't activate just one relay molecule, they might activate 10. And each of these guys is going to not activate just one of the second guy, but they might each activate 10. And so now I have 100 molecules. Each of these guys can activate multiples of the third guy. So by the time we get to the end of the cascade, we have this huge amplification of the signal, which means that we can, oh my gosh, turn on that DNA a lot and then get a lot of gene expressed and have all that messenger RNA and that protein to make all the things happen that we need to happen. Signal transduction. Plants will often grow in response to their environment and those are those growth patterns are known as tropisms. Phototropism, you can probably guess, is all about growing toward the light. We're going to talk about that quite a bit more on the next slide. Gravitropism, which can also be called geotropism, is growth in response to gravity. What's kind of cool is that plants have both positive and negative gravitropism. So plant roots have positive gravitropism. They will grow down toward gravity. While the stems have negative gravitropism, they grow away from gravity. Maybe what I think is the coolest one is thigmotropism. Thigmotropism is a response to touch. And so this Venus flytrap, the fly touches the inside of the trap and that triggers a crazy fast growth pattern. And then the, the changing of the cell sizes causes the trap to close. That is thigmotropism. If you've ever seen plants like viney plants wrap around things to help them hold, hold, help hold themselves up, that's also thigmotropism, growth in response to touch. And as promised, here are some more details on phototropism, growth in response to light. We've got these auxin molecules. Remember that their job is to activate some proton pumping so that we can loosen the cellulose and stretch out some plant cells so they can grow. If we have unequal light, if we have light exposure more on this side and less on that side, then we have these efflux pumps that are going to push the auxin. Are you ready for this? to the shady side of the plant. So if I have sun here, we're going to push the auxin away to the shady side of the plant. What happens now? We have more auxin over here, less auxin over here. The cells on the shady side are going to elongate, but these guys are going to stay short. And as these ones get longer, but these guys stay shorter, and these guys get longer, but these guys stay shorter. The whole plant is going to end up bending toward the light. Here is just another um, image kind of showing that same thing. We've got, if I have sunny side here, we're going to pump the auxin to the shady side here, and then these cells will elongate. If the sun happens to be on this side of the plant, the auxins will get pumped away to the shady side of the plant and those cells will elongate and then we end up with bending toward the light there. 
if we've got direct sunlight, there isn't more exposure on one side or the other, then the oxen stays pretty equally distributed and the plant grows up instead of sideways. Propagation is one way that we humans can take advantage of plant growth. It's also a way that plants can asexually reproduce themselves, but I feel like it happens more often with us humans. So what we can do is take some mother plant, we can chop off a piece that includes some meristem tissue. We might choose to add some hormones. You can definitely buy auxins at the garden store. And then these tiny little pieces of the plant, because they have that indeterminate growth, keep going and going and going as long as they have resources to do it. These tiny little cuttings will start to grow more stem and more leaves and some roots. And then eventually you can move the whole plant into some dirt and you have a clone, a genetically identical plant from the mama plant. This is a lab that we will do in class. So get excited for plant babies. Let's also get excited for the end of this video lecture. We defined meristem, the stem cells of plants. We talked about mitosis, PMAT, how the nucleus of eukaryotic cells divides. We talked about how hormones control plant growth with a big look at auxins. We talked about those efflux pumps, how they pump the auxin to the shady side of the plant in phototropism. We also talked about um, geotropism, gravitropism, thigmotropism. How those auxins work is signal transduction with that lovely amplification of the signal and then that gene expression. And then we wrapped up with our little look at micropropagation, making some plant cuttings so that we could asexually reproduce plants, we could clone the plants, and my friends, well done today.